Welcome back. So as you can see, I, t I took out my um, skyscraper backgrounds because I found an issue in the last vid and I thought it was to do my with my layers. It was not. Um, so after a few issues, I realized what I missed off. Um, obviously, need to check the collusion of the object. The collusion of this object is bad. So on your default, I would recommend changing it to ID idle like the rest I'm just going to sort my collusion out like so so the box is around it all however the issue that I had was that I forgot to set the origin point so I recorded all the video started playing it and my character just moved and off the screen I was like why is that happening so I thought it was to do with my layers it was going behind the layers it wasn't the issue was the origin point so to sort out the origin point, click on this right here, and then we right click over here that says image point, quick assign, make sure it's to the bottom, and make sure you then click apply to all, all animations. I've already done that, so let's get going. So I'll close that for now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a collision for the platform at the bottom. Obviously your collision, your area will look better so um, I'm just doing this for testing purposes and showing you how to get an animation moving with key presses so to do occlusion what we do is we create a new sprite call it collision like so double click out here I'm going to change it's just going to be an empty box with nothing in it so I'm just going to resize this it's going to be 16 by 16 click OK click off and there it is. So what we do, I'm just going to cover the whole area like that. Okay. Now to make this, to make any object collide with our collision, what we do is we go to here on our behaviors, click on there, click this, and make sure that this is a solid. And it says make the object impassable, so the ob other objects cannot move or fall through it. Click add. Okay, and if you click play, our object shouldn't fall through it. Okay, so now we're going to focus on getting our play to move through key presses. So, a couple of interesting things. If you click on behaviors, click here, and go down to platform. Um, Construct 2 comes with a full range of platform variables already pre-made for you. So if I click add now, click off press play and if you use the arrow keys you're able to move up and around as you choose obviously our animations aren't done yet but that's no problem so like so which I think is quite a nice little addition gets you creating a game really fast and quickly and you can change the different variables around here so you can change the jump height the max speed the acceleration the de de deceleration of your character um, we also need one more behavior, so if I click on here, click behaviors, click add, and we want destroy outside layout. So it will destroy this object if it goes outside our layout. So with that done, we need to create a new instance variable. Now this variable will be the variables that we need to ch change different animation states when we create our event sheet. So what we're going to do is click instance variable here. Like so, click new. And we need to make sure the type is a text. Change the name to something like player underscore direction. Like so, and we're going to set the initial value to idle. That's our first animation. So click OK. So with that done, we're going to come to our event sheet. So I'm going to click add event. Make sure that you do add a keyboard event here. So if I just delete my keyboard one, just to show you it. So delete that. So make sure in your layout, you double click, click on the keyboard import like so, and then go to event sheet, click add event, keyboard, keys down, next. So I'm going to choose this. D for the movement of right. So our actions are going to be 
clicking on your player character we want to simulate the control because the platform comes with different controls we want to simulate the control for left right without setting up ourselves independently so all you do because we're going to be pressing D we want to simulate the control of right okay our next action is going to be Batman or your player I'm going to set the value in this instance variable section and the value we're looking for in speech maps is right obviously we want our character to notice that our variable is our ID for right Click done our next action is Batman and this is where we set the animation so the animation we are looking for is in speech marks to start with ID underscore we don't need to call the idle because we've already set an instance variable of it so and whatever you named your player sprite so mine was Batman dot player direction so that's calling the instance variable I'm going to play it from the beginning and click done so if you click play and test that use D to move you can see Batman is moving right and his animations are working Batman there we go so we can test the same for left so click Batman actually incorrect keyboard my apologies keys down click a click OK click done now we're just going to copy and paste these to save a bit of time control C control V and move them down into the correct place control C control V and move them down to the correct place so instead of it being right it should be left you can create a jump animation I didn't do this for mine but the principles work the same so I'm going to click right again and this time the text and speech marks will be left click done and everything else is fine there's one last thing we need to add to these so if you click on Batman click next we're looking for set mirrored in appearance so when he's going right it's not mirrored however when he's going on left we need to mirror the sprite and the animation so click on Batman click mirrored make sure it's mirrored done so if we press play now we move right and we can move left and he flips over as well quite violently I might add -na 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 -na. well that is our animation set up for moving right and for moving left he jumps a bit if you notice that's mainly his collisions messing up so you need to tweak your collisions however way you see fit okay to get him to go back into his idle position what we do is click add event click Batman and we're going to compare his instance variable so if player directions is equal oops if player directions is equal to idle like so click done then we need to just drag copy and paste the set animation so control C control V just drag and drop that down there and one last thing click add event system next on every tick so what that means is it will go back once you stop pressing your keyboard to the idle position so if we just test that and for some reason he is not going back so our direction is idle that's equal to hmm interesting let me delete that a sec let me delete this action a second Oops. Let me delete that for a second. Delete. Let me just try it this way to make sure this is correct. So set 
ID, speech marks of course, ID, and uh, Batman dot player direction, and of course it's from the beginning. Click done. Don't know why I've got two actions there. Anyway, let if I just play it. For some reason it's not going back to its original. I'm just going to drag this up. See if that makes a damn difference. Hmm. That is a strange one indeed. Oh yes, I know I know what we're missing now. So on every tick we need to make sure that we set our player direction. So set our value to idle. Like so. There we go. That was the last thing we need to do, so apologies about that. So click play. There we go. So he now goes back to his idle position. Sort of slides as well, but you can change that deceleration. So that's how you set up an animation and get it working in Construct 2. So start creating a level. Start getting your character moving around the level, jumping if you want to. Okay, so I'll see you next week. Bye for now.